Well, Saudi Arabia is not only under fire for using arms bought from Western countries against civilians. Riyadh's human rights record is one of the worst in global rankings. One woman, for example, Lujain Al-Hatloul, was arrested and jailed simply because she campaigned for the right of women to drive. DW's Aya Ibrahim has been following her story. She joins us now here in the studio. Good morning to you, Aya. Nice to see you again. Can you tell us about Lujain and what happened to her? So Lujain Al-Hatloul is really one of the most prominent, if uh, one of the most prominent women at the forefront of uh, um, Saudi Arabia's. Um, Saudi Arabian women's campaign for the right to drive and also the campaign against the male guardianship system, which uh, puts a lot of restrictions on women's lives and basically gives this control to the male uh, members uh, of their family. Uh, Lujain's uh, activism found place mostly on social media. She would post back in 2013 and 2014 videos of herself defying what was at the time an illegal act in Saudi Arabia, namely for women to actually just be behind the wheel. Famously, it's a video that Remember we're seeing Remember that now. video very well. Indeed, the in 2014. we're looking at right now, yeah. In 2014, she attempted to cross the border from the UAE into Saudi Arabia and was detained for about 73 days. Um, in um, May of 2018, she, along with other uh, female uh, uh, activists, as well as male activists who have been campaigning for the same rights, were taken by Saudi uh, authorities. And uh, Lujain has been behind bars uh, essentially ever since and allegedly tortured members of her family. Say. Can you tell us some more about that? How, how is she being treated in jail? So um, her family says that she's been electrocuted, uh, uh, waterboarded, and um, uh, sexually uh, assaulted. I was recently uh, able to interview her sister here in Berlin, and this is what she had to say about the latest in Lujain's case. So the, the, the charges officially are everything that she has done about her activism. So asking for women's rights, um, applying for a job at the UN, everything that she has done for, for her activism. But why they are um, holding her, I think, you know, it's very difficult to say, but I would say maybe they don't want anyone to, to, to have an opinion and to speak their opinion. They want everything to come um, top down and uh, nothing to be bottom up. What condition is she in now? What do you know about her? Um, so Lujain, uh, her trial started in March of this year, but since April they stopped everything of uh, the trial, so we don't know why they stopped their last session, we don't know uh, what's going to happen. Since April she's in solitary confinement. Other than this we have no news at all. I mean, we talk, they talk to her, my parents talk to her, but um, what's going to happen we have nothing at all, and she doesn't know what's happening. Do you know anything about her condition? Is she being treated well? Is she being uh, mistreated? How is she doing? I think um, compared to the times where she was being tortured, she's a bit m better. But soli solitary confinement is torture, I think. So I don't think sh it's a good situation. Aya, clearly any reforms that the Saudi government has uh, put into place are, are not helping campaigners like Lou Jane. But they're helping a lot of other people, one must say. I mean, the, the loosening of restrictions have included things like music being allowed to play in restaurants, the easing of restriction on the separation of uh, uh, genders in, uh, in public spaces. There has been a gradual dismantling of the male guardianship system. Uh, by royal decree, women are going to start having more control over their travel and uh, family affairs. But you're absolutely right. This doesn't do anything for uh, Lujain's family or the other women that are in prison with her. And uh, perhaps what puts a huge question mark on all of these reforms, if the Saudi government is uh, really open. Why are these women that were at the forefront to bring these changes, why aren't they free to criticize and perhaps even give feedback on these reforms? And why aren't they able to enjoy the fruit of their labor? Look forward to hearing more about some answers to that question. Aya Ibrahim, thanks so very much.